All right, guys, in this video, we are going to learn how to um, perform CRUD operations on the database. That is create, read, update, and delete. And the technologies we're going to be using is Cosmos uh, Blockchain, Ignite, the command line tool. And then we are going to use Golang. That is um, a programming language by Google. Just a little bit of it. And don't worry if you don't know any of these things. You don't need prior knowledge of it. And then we're going to use Swagger. Swagger is what will give us the front end for our API documentation. And I can add it at the end. But uh, we can perform the CRUD op operations on the command line. But at the end of this video, if there's still time, I would add, like, like to add um, an API interface. And uh, this is to give you an idea of how to build your applications on top of the blockchain. So we'll start by deploying a full blockchain. It's going to be functional, fully functional. And then on top of that, we will then uh, start performing. Uh, we'll create a post, like a blog on top of it. Okay. And uh, the reason we're using Ignite is to make it really fast. We don't want to build a blockchain from scratch. We're going to just use a clone of Cosmos DB. Cosmos DB is what Binance Smart Chain is built on. So it's really powerful. All right. So um, to start, make sure you go to your favorite folder where you usually run your... Um, uh, code wherever you have your softwares uh, in so in my own case I'm just going to I'm going to go to this folder uh, PWD this is where I usually save my files uh, yours could be on your desktop or wherever wherever you save your software all right so now I'm going to um, run a command to install ignite okay ignite is the first thing we're going to be installing and uh, the command goes like so, all right, uh, so call HTTPS and uh, get.ignite.com slash CLI exclamation mark space pi bar space bash. Make sure you have your internet connected uh, because without internet, this will not run. Now, um, I've already installed Ignite, so it's going to um, just try and reinstall it or something. Okay. So uh, this usually takes some time. So I'm going to pause this video and come back right after this has installed. Now, if for some weird reason it fails, uh, you need to read the error. And most likely reason it will fail is because call is not set up on your system. So you just take it, take copy the error, go to Google and Google how to install and set up call on your system. Once you have call set up, uh, this installation will work. As you can see, I already have it installed, the latest version. So um, it didn't take time. Now, the next thing we want to do is um, to find out for sure if Ignite is installed. So we'll do Ignite version. And this should show you the version. If it throws some sort of error, that means it's not installed. So my version of Ignite is 28.5.3. Now, if you're watching this video in future, you need to know that your version of Ignite will... Uh, be higher than this and it doesn't matter it should follow the same uh, general concept okay so what is ignite ignite is a command line tool that helps us to quickly deploy cosmos blockchain instead of trying to pull from cosmos repository manually set up everything manually and start uh, installing things one by one no ignite just does the whole heavy lifting for you so now we have ignite set up we can now start scaffolding uh, our Cosmos DB. So let's go ahead. Before I go ahead, my name is Dave Partner. If you're watching me for the first time, I create tech tutorials uh, for years now. So go to YouTube, search for Brain Temple Tutorial TV, and you are going to see my channel. And uh, if you don't have any knowledge of Golang, you can watch this video. It doesn't matter. It looks like JavaScript, okay? But then you can go back and uh, study Golang tutorial uh go to my uh, channel click on playlist you'll see this free 18 part video tutorial it brushes you up on the basics i'm also on udemy and this is my udemy handle i have more advanced go tutorials and blockchain tutorials on udemy the links are below this video in the description section below click on it it will expand you will see the necessary links but i'm on udemy as user look at it here udemy.com forward slash user forward slash Dave partner go there and find my best courses and sign up for them all right so 
let's go ahead first of all we'll scaffold the blockchain and we're going to give it a name all right so the blockchain what i want to call my blockchain is blog all right but um i already have something like that let me clear this i'm going to give it um a name okay our blog ignite scaffold chain this is the command then you can give it a name i'm going to call it my blog enter and this takes some time because it's gonna go to uh, the repo, the um, the the Cosmos DB uh, or Cosmos Chain repo. Now I think this is a good time for me to mention that Cosmos DB is different from Cosmos uh, SDK, or which is the Cosmos blockchain. Cosmos DB is by I think um, Azure. Okay, it's a database system, just like MySQL and stuff. But Cosmos blockchain. Is different and we're working on cosmos blockchain right now and i say that binance smart chain was built on cosmos blockchain and a whole lot of um blockchains are either built on cosmos blockchain or simply a clone of it so i'm gonna pause this video once this scaffolding is done i'll be back and usually this takes about five to ten minutes even with really fast internet okay now uh we're set up and um it's it give us give us two instructions the first one is cd to move into my blog okay the project we just set up and the second one is um to start the blockchain which we don't want to do right now okay we want to build our module on top of the blockchain so the way cosmos db is is you have a huge blockchain all right but this blockchain is intelligently designed that it is broken down into modules that communicate with each other really smart so when you get the blockchain you can deploy it as is or you can build your own module on top of it okay so now the feature we want to build is a blog feature which is crud save uh, create read update and delete but it's a module on its own okay so we're going to automatically create the module here then we go into the file system using our vs code to edit it right okay so let's go ahead so um now we're going to um create the fields per se in the database all right the fields we need for our blog is um id and then the name of the creator the body the title and uh, the data the table name is going to be post just as view it like that so we'll do scaffold type post title body creator's name and um, the id the id is going to be uh, a uint okay this is how to do that now in case you're wondering where i got this it's actually on the internet so uh, either now or later on you can go online and uh, go to ignite uh documentation okay ignite.com docs.ignite.com and read through their documentation uh usually uh it's usually a maze and a mess so the purpose, my purpose of creating this video is to make it easier for you to understand. I'm going to explain everything and we're going to build it so that when you get to the, um, the platform or the docs, it becomes easy. Now you need to know that I'm using this version, version 28. In future, when you're watching this, it's going to be higher. All right. Now also, or 2.8, whatever. Also, um, Cosmos DB. All right. So we have a Cosmos DB. Oh, Cosmos SDK. All right. The DB is the one by Azure. So this is the Cosmos SDK. So docs.cosmos.network main build. This is where you see the documentation. Again, I don't know why they did it that way, but it's a total mess. Once you start, you are totally lost. So it's part of why I'm making this video to clear the way for you. And of course, uh, the version at the time I'm making this is 0 0.52, but also in future when you're watching this is going to be higher it doesn't matter all right okay so um can we get back to uh command prompt and see okay now it has done something interesting which is it has created proto my blog my blog post dot proto post added so it has added uh what i would call a table okay that's the best way to explain it a table in the db now now um the table is added we can even start 
implementing CRUD operations here. We have not even written any code. I'm going to show you the code it created, the code base. But here we can start trying out some things. So let's run a simple CRUD. So with Ignite, remember you can do the same thing without Ignite. It's just going to be more boring and it's going to take days. Okay. Ignite scaffold message. So we're creating a message. We're sending a message to the, blo the blockchain. So the message is what? Create. What is it going to create? A record in the post table. And what record is it going to take? Title, body, response will be uh, response and then ID, uint. Okay. So this is what we need. And we hit enter. And then we watch what's going to give us. You saved project changes have not been committed. To enable reverting to your current state, commit your changes. Okay. You see that it's uh, well connected to GitHub. So I'm going to say why yes i wanted to commit so um let's um now it's scaffolding again all right now but we can actually open our code my blog and in vs code and see what's happening so i'm going to just um shut down my vs code and then reopen it remember that if you are if you um uh using if you already have vs code installed you can just type code space dot I'll show you how to do that. But for now, let me open my code editor. And then um, here, I'll, let's go look for that folder so we can open it here as a project. So I've, I've clicked open folder. Restart Visual Studio. If I restart Maker Ben. So I know where it is in my docs and my blog. Open. All right, it's open now. Now we're going to do uh, the next step, which is we'll go to X blog and keeper. So this is where um, it created the stuff for us. So we'll go to X, make sure it's open. That is, you see, my blog, X, my blog, and then we'll go to keeper. Now this is where we're going to add the files for any new tables we add to our uh, blockchain database. So as you can see, post table is not here. A post file is not here. So I'm going to add it. Inside Keeper, I'm going to do post.go. This is more like mo a model, okay? And the package is Keeper. Now, which programming language am I writing on? Go, Golang. That's why it's ending with .go. Like I said, uh, it looks like JavaScript, so don't be alarmed if you don't code uh, Golang. But then, going forward, go to my channel and... Um, watch more on golang okay so this is my channel on youtube but also you can reach out to me if you have any if you have any interesting positions okay so you see dave that's my email all right so now, the next thing you do in, in Go, you, you import dependencies, packages. I'm not going to import them manually. I want to write the code so that my editor can import them or by itself, okay? Because I have an extension, a Go extension, the official one by Google. Now, but also, um, I think we're ready to write the codes. Remember to subscribe. If you've not subscribed to my channel, click the red subscribe button below. All right? So if you're following any of, uh, of my uh, video tutorials, you know that I like to add a lot of comments so that when you pull this repo from GitHub, it's going to perfectly make sense to you. It's, my code is usually like poetry. Okay. Now, if you look here, you will see that Cosmos SDK has already uh, created a create post for me because I ran the command in uh, Ignite. Ignite came here and created it for me. So this is supposed to handle the creation of post but it doesn't matter we're going to write ours manually so um i want to first summarize the imports we are going to have so that you can get an idea of um, what they are and uh, i wonder why this is comment not terminated syntax okay works now okay so the first import we're going to have is encoding uh binary 
and um, it's supposed to help convert uh, between bytes arrays and numeric types now remember these are just modules remember you can import your uh, create and import your own modules so prefix is the one that is called creates a key value store with prefixes for namespacing and uh, number three is going to be runtime provides cosmos sdk store adapters don't worry if all these things look a bit confusing it's gonna just be clearer as we move along and then you have sdk provides basic cosmos cosmos sdk types and interfaces and then types uh, which is the final one the modules custom data types uh, okay types all right this is uh the five key things you should be expecting on this page uh they will be automatically imported but uh let's start with our first function which is append post function the append post function is uh, basically to create a new post okay all right uh and of course um it's gonna get the current post count assign an id to the new post serialize and store the post using the post id as the key and finally update the post count and return the new id okay cool so let's start so uh, this is how to declare functions in go so k declare variable capital letter keeper and then the name of the function append post okay i'm gonna declare variable call it ctx sdk dot context okay uh, post types dot post and then it's gonna return we expect it to return u int u int six four and that's it <clears throat> now don't worry about all this on the line if i save control or command s it will import uh what i need okay so it has already imported types remember that we had types here that's what types stand for so i think oh we'll be back or we'll, we'll attach it later okay now i want to actually list the things that will be happening in this uh comment section uh, in this function like i said i like to be extra detailed get the current post count so just be a little patient um, assign an id to the new post so this id is going to be id equal to current count okay and then three serialize and store the post post using the post id as the key so there's this thing called serialize and deserialize in uh, blockchains uh, when you want to save to the blockchain uh, db you have to serialize the data when you want to um, uh, retrieve you have to deserialize so expect a lot of that as we are uh, working here update the post count and return the new post id all right so now everything is clear here let's actually start writing code the code is going to be much sweeter here so the first thing get the current post or uh, uh, count okay so how to do that we we'll declare a variable and uh, k dot get post count post count ctx okay so of course uh, this variable this uh, this function is yet to be created this is how to create a variable in go that is of type any okay now this next one is set the post id to the current count okay to do that it's not hard we'll do post.id post.id equal to count perfect 
now next we we'll do open the key value store in the context of the blockchain all right so to do that we'll create a variable and call it store adapter what you call the variable doesn't really matter and it's gonna be prefix dot new store store adapter types dot key prefix like i said if you're wondering where i'm getting this uh you can always read it up on your on the blog on their uh, documentation uh, once you understand it you can now use it any way you want to so this is post key so um this is how to get the key value pair now um i can con command s on my keyboard command s and the save will happen and the imports will happen okay so cross check if there are any errors no errors now we move to the next step which is um serialize the post into bytes for storage so you can only save bytes uh, de uh data type bytes in the uh, blockchain so we're trying to convert the post into bytes okay so we'll create a variable and call it append appended value is equal to k dot cdc dot most marshall this is a, a function that um, marshall's post okay and then the next thing is store the post in the key value store using the post id as the key okay store dot set get or set get post id bytes post dot id and then appended value so just cross check that everything is fine and then increment and set the new post count in the store and that is k dot set post count ctx count plus one so we're incrementing the uh you know it's not like a regular database where there's an auto increment feature um uh somewhere okay so we have to manually increment it so finally in this function we we'll return the id of the newly added post okay return count and um that largely store uh solves uh, most of our problem okay so we go to the next uh function on that this next function is called the get post function okay get post count function it re it retrieves this is this function okay that's the one we're trying to get so um what does it do uh it retrieves the total number of posts in the store okay and how is it gonna do it do that uh step one access the key value store step two retrieve the post count from a predefined key if no count exists return zero and then finally step three convert the count from from byte array to an unsigned 64 bit integer and i think we're done now we can write the code so we can say funk k keeper get post count that's the name of the function ctx sdk dot context you int 
six four. So this is how you basically that's what we expect it to get. That's how you define as functions here. So open the key value store. That's what we want it to do now. And um store adapter will runtime kv store adapter k dot where is this two k uh dot store service oops store service open key store okay like this sorry um just to make it easier for you to see i'm gonna pull this a little bit okay and then ctx that's how to do it and then the next is uh create a new store with no specific prefix and that's simple too we just um do prefix dot new store store adapter and it's gonna be in bytes once you think of saving anything in the db in, in the in the blockchain you should think in bytes that reminds me remember the store adapter here has an issue because we didn't spell it well here so store adapter and um yeah that's good okay so our next challenge is uh to define define the key for storing the post count so to do that we define a variable first and then equate it to key prefix types dot post count key right, pay attention to the um the case the cases okay and um this is um equal sign all right and uh, we keep going the next one is retrieve the byte value stored under the post count key and to do that we declare a variable call it bz and say store dot get byte key and that sorts it and uh, if no count exists return zero okay so we do if bz is equal to nil return zero and lastly we convert the byte value into an unsigned 64 int 64 bit integer and uh here and uh, can you guess how we can do that it's simple return binary dot big endian dot u int six four busy now um pay attention to the that u here is capital control command s to save and uh by this time if you look up here you will see that more have been imported all right remember that i explained i explained all that will be imported here so more of them are being imported okay now we're done with the second function let's go to the next function which simply says let me come to the top the next function says get post id bytes okay and what does it do converts a post id that is unsigned unsigned 64 bit integer i move myself here okay into a byte slice for use as key and that's a byte so we'll be back here once we start coding and the steps are simple uh step one is to create 
a byte array and step two is the final step step two encode the id as big oops big endian and return the byte array and that's done so now let's write the function uh, very very easy function to write so the, the name of the function is get post id bytes and um, we're going to pass in the id of un64 and we expect it to return a byte for us byte array so this means array okay byte array and then the first step is to create an 8 byte array for the id and how do we do that create a variable and equate it to make byte 8 all right then the next step is convert the id to a byte array in big endian format so binary dot big endian dot put u in 64 here busy id okay and finally return the byte array and return busy <sighs> okay so i think uh, we're good so far and of course control command s if i save we can come up and see if it has imported more things so as you can see so far most of the uh errors we had the red underlines they are gone because now we are starting to uh write most of the functions and the next function which is essentially second to the last function uh for this page we're gonna call it um set post count okay set post count function all right so um to do that uh, let's even see what it's gonna do it's gonna do stores the updated post count in the key value store okay so that's all, all, all it does the step is simple just one step step one just convert the post count to bytes and store it under post count key period so let's start uh declare the function k keeper set post count that's the name of the function ctx sdk dot context count u int 64 where is it 64 and that's it so now we're going to write the code inside so the first thing is open the key value store we did it earlier so it's easy to open store adapter equal to runtime runtime dot kv store adapter okay and then inside it we have k dot store service dot open kv store ct ctx so this is how to we're opening this ctx that's how to open it so the next step is create a new store with no specific prefix okay and that's simple store prefix dot new store store adapter adapter then it's gonna be in byte byte all right and define the key for the post count all right define the key for the post count and that says byte key types dot key prefix 
types.post count key. Create an 8 byte array to hold the count value. Okay, so we do bz make byte 8. And uh, this solves 9% uh, of our problems. So finally, we convert the count value to bytes value in big Indian format. I have a question for you. Have you subscribed to my channel yet? Have you shared? have you commented so it's an honest question that calls for deep reflection because i'm giving you something special you can't find on the internet okay so binary dot big endian we've done this before so capital letter puts you in six four and then bz count then we return okay before we return let's write a comment explaining install the updated post count in the key key value store okay and how do we do it store dot set byte key busy so that makes for a very good function and um the final one is to fetch the post okay at least for this section of the, uh, the project to so fetch the post post we're going to call this get post function and what does it do it uh, retrieves a post by its id and uh, the steps are simple uh, just two steps step one access the store and fetch the post by its id and uh, step two If the post exists, on Marshall, it back into the post object. Okay, good. Okay, so I'm going to create a simple comment that explains a marshalling and unmarshalling. It's simple, just conversion of data types. So, so converting uh, from uh a go data type into a data type that can be saved in the db or marshalling is to is the reverse of it so now let's create um let me even complete it here on marshalling is the reverse of it okay so let's then go ahead funk key k keeper the name of the function get post and then ctx sdk dot context id uint six four and then val types dot post found found bool Okay, now we are going to do open the key value store and say store adapter runtime dot kv store adapter. Is that not it? Adapter adapter k dot store store service okay dot store service dot um no k okay, dot store service dot open kv store 
ctx so that's it and then create that's the next uh, thing we're gonna do here create a new store with the post prefix and uh, store prefix we've done this before by now you should be used to it new store store adapter types dot key prefix types dot post key okay just make sure our spelling is correct and um that's it and we can retrieve retrieve the byte value associated with the post id and that's gonna be simple to do we're going to do store dot get get post id bytes and we're passing the id remember this function we have it up here get post this function and what does it do it converts the post id uh, into a byte slice for users key so which is what we, we just converted the post id into a byte slice so we can use it as key all right and um, now we check for some errors okay so if the post is not found what do we do return false okay so how do we check it if it is nil uh what do we do return return val false and that's it the next one is on marshall the byte value back into the into a post object post object now we know the meaning of marshalling and on marshalling okay so okay cdc dot most on marshall and uh we, what are we on marshalling uh this pointer val and we are good so finally we return the post and true to indicate it was found and uh, how do we do that return val true and that brings us to somehow the end of this section there are still some pending functions though for instance set post this one is supposed to store an updated post in the store using an id okay and then uh secondly uh we can do update post okay we can do delete post but uh let's go ahead first so now it's um time to add the keys to um the the, the post count keys to the post functions first off i want to be sure that i have no bug because this file is red so where's the bug maybe it, it just hasn't saved because i can see something here but there's no bug on the screen hold on a second hold on a second hold my beer let me just scroll through to be sure there is no bug somewhere oh busy and i've seen one um just to confirm that everything was imported we have encoding binary cosmos sdk uh is here cosmos sdk runtime is here types is here uh, but something is missing block types my block types yeah it's here so what's missing store prefix yeah something is missing and that's sdk github.com for slash cosmos for sdk types like this so um that's the key thing that is missing all right i found the bug here and i know you must have seen it much earlier which is um here we put double bracket instead of single but apart from that the rest of the function is clean here we did double again instead of single and that clears up um so uh why is this red let's see yeah uh the bug here simply says that types is not imp imported we're gonna import it but let's look at another bug somewhere here in this function that says get post count we did if bx instead of if bz so if you've seen it before 
would have gone through and um, again uh, types is not imported because uh, we've not imported it and uh, uint64 now this is supposed to be like um, the casing and there you go uh, proper spelling uint64 and uh, let's work with this store adapter store adapter there is a little um, arrow here we need an extra line here to equate this to so we can write the runtime runtime dot kv store adapter dot k dot um, store service open kv store ctx yeah so um the spelling of this is supposed to be this way and i'm glad uh, most of the errors are gone except for the types okay so we're just gonna cross check the cosmos sdk types so um since this is a go uh, platform we have to go get this okay so copy let me just cross check the um spelling it's on github.com cosmos cosmos for slash cosmos sdk types this is where it is so i'm gonna copy this and uh, we come to our terminal and actually get it into our project okay if you look at this file here it says go mode uh, that's where we're gonna get it so i'm going to click here open terminal and then in the terminal i'm gonna fetch it so i'll do um just waiting for my terminal to load oh, why is it taking time to load good go get right click and paste that link paste let me shift myself so you can see cosmos Co okay so i hit enter it's gonna fetch it and list it here and that's gonna so that's going to solve that uh bug go mode feature is deprecated protobuf use go lang protobuf module instead uh yeah well, that that's understandable all right uh bring myself down you know what it's complaining about it's complaining about protobuf so it's saying that this we should use this okay because this one uh look at the the details github this one is hosted on github as a repo but this one is on uh google's website so that's what we want to use so if you go to go mode and uh, go through the packages that are imported in your go mode you see we can see the protobuf that is being complained about where is it you see the github golang protobuf but the one we want is the one from google so uh first of all let's import it from here and it's uh really easy to import first of all copy it copy and uh, go get put above and give it a few seconds and now it's imported okay so let's search here protobuf you see uh it's imported here but also we have protobuf here github.com go long protobuf so i'm going to remove this or at least comment it out i'm going to comment it out and save uh, that should solve our problem but it's always good to do go mode tidy once you do this kind of thing it just goes and um, removes all the unused uh, stuff in your file and of course it returned it and added go lang okay hopefully that error won't uh, appear again but now we have this too uh, the go lang and um, the google protobuf okay so um let's go ahead though uh we'll look at our file one more time i just want to be sure that all um errors are gone so in case you don't know uh what protobuf is used for it's used for the marshalling uh here that's what's used for the marshalling but i need to uh correct this bug where i used a uh, double bracket for that 
So um, scrolling through one time, one more time, it complains only about this. That's the next thing we're going to solve. But let's just be sure that that's the only bug on this page. Post key types post key. Yeah. So I think um, that's the only bug. Okay. So now we're going to go and attach it as keys. All right. And um, it's easy. So I'm going to expand this. I will expand this. I will expand this and it says keeper um, X. So we're in the X folder, X, my block folder. And then we go to the types. Now inside the types, we'll go to keys. Now uh, notice these two files have been created because we ran that command earlier or in our command prompt. So here we're going to attach the keys. Okay. So um, here, let me start typing. All right. So if you look here, you see that um, some constants for the application were defined here. And this constant are used throughout the application. So let's add new one. So the next one we want to add is post key constant. It's uh, used to uniquely, uniquely identify posts within the system system okay then it will be used as the beginning of the key for each post followed uh, by their unique, unique, unique ID. And then uh, let's define it. Post key is going to be post value. This is what it's going to contain. And then the next one is post count key. So this key will be used to keep track of the ID of the latest post added to the store. So we just save the ID here and uh, we're going to call it post count key and it's going to be equal to post count. Now, um, let's say you created another um, table in quotes table. All right. Uh, which is basically another key value pair. So if, let's say you created it in your DB. You will come here to add the um, constants. So um, now if we go here where it says message create post. So inside the um, keeper. And we see uh, keeper message server create post dot go. You will see that there are some um, code here already. Now we can work with, let me minimize this. Now we can update it uh, with a create post function. And as you can see here, the function is pre-written because we run a command, but we can now um, develop this function more to do exactly what we want. So first of all, let's look at the definition create posts and it has um, GT, a GCTX context, MSG types, and um, create post response and error. Okay, yeah, everything is fine here. And now we can start writing uh, some code. So we declare this truck or this variable, var post, is going to be a key value pair equal to types dot post and uh, it's going to have creator msg dot creator and i'll duplicate all this so i can that is just three there's going to be a title it's going to be msg dot title and um, there's going to be a body and that's going to be body msg dot body okay the next thing we want to define is the id K dot append post and it's gonna carry ctx 
and uh, post comma make sure there is a comma at the end okay now we can return uh, let me remove this we are going to return types msg create post response and um, which is what we have here this is what we are returning but we are going to return this inside here we can say id id comma and new this is gonna be this id here so i think um we're done with this um we can scaffold update message uh, because initially we just had uh, the create message so let's uh, scaffold update message and then we we'll write code to um for it so here we'll go to a terminal clear and how to scaffold it is simple ignite uh, let me take myself up so we scaffold it by saying ignite scaffold scaffold a message for us and uh, we're gonna call that message update post and it's gonna have title have a body have an id which is your int and we hit enter keep your eye here and once it scaffolds good uh we're gonna come here in post.go and implement a set post um function this is where we started and we have some certain nice functions here we have set post count we have get post we have get post count append post so now we have to add another function here uh called set post all right so uh we're gonna create the set post function okay i'll just uh open the function but i want to write um kind of an explanation for some of the variables we've been parameters we've been passing into functions all right uh because i know somebody's gonna need it so up here at the beginning of this function i want to add what i'm gonna call an explanation of parameters which you don't see anybody ever doing but i want to do it to make this whole thing super easy explanation of parameters if you want to get the github uh a repo of this uh check in the description section you're gonna see it make sure you're following me so the first one is ctx this ctx here what the hell does it mean okay it provides cts is called context okay i think i should even put it context which is with this is the variable we defined as ctx okay it provides the current blockchain execution context allowing move down move down move down okay allowing what interaction action with the store and the next thing i want to uh, define is called runtime dot runtime dot kv store kv store adapter and what does it do opens a key value store for interacting interacting with the database in the blockchain so the next one is going to be prefix dot new store adds a prefix post key to ensure name spacing avoid conflicts with the other types okay so um this runtime dot kv store adapter uh we've used it a lot here and i've already added the comment here so just want to make sure everything is well explained all right um these are things that i wish that uh tutors do when they are teaching um like a uh, programming like you you take you take it easy and explain and everything to me okay so post key ask the prefix post key remember where we define post key to ensure name spacing and 
uh no i'm repeating this uh so we're gonna do k k c d c dot most marshall okay serializes the post into bytes into bytes preparing it for storage and then store dot set which is the last one saves the the post data into the in the store using the post id as the key okay so now uh let's now write the simple uh, set post function okay here it's it's gonna say uh funk k keeper set post ctx sdk dot context post types dot post okay and then we start writing so here is gonna be store adapter now i don't want to type this again since we have it okay we already have it here so i'm just gonna copy and paste and we already know what it does so it opens the key value store copy it and this too so we need this too we need this too so open the key value pair and um post key yeah so now we're going to marshall serialize oops i'm going to serialize serialize the post object into a byte array so it can be stored b equal to k c d c dot most marshall and post use the post id as the key and store the marshalled post in the store okay so to do that we just set get post id bytes and then post.id and b now that's that's of the problem so just make sure that this is in capital letter this i here and everything is good so next function so um here i'm going to add the comments that says uh set posts is the update logic and then we're gonna come here in the keeper and our uh, update post so here we're going to have to create a file that we call update so the file is going to be msg server update post.go just the way we have create post just to be sure that everything is fine and uh, we're good now we start writing the code so it's just going to be uh, very much like create post so package keeper in case you don't know where why we have this package uh, mostly uh, conventionally it's the the folder name where the file is located import so we're we're gonna allow the ide to do the import automatically if it doesn't then we can come back and fix it so here we're going to have k msg server and we call the function update post 
it's gonna be go ctx just like we did in the create post context context comma msg uh star types dot msg update post response comma error so this is supposed to handle the update for us and then open bracelets that is open curly brackets so i'm gonna i'm gonna scroll one time so that you can see everything all right now uh we continue so as usual i expect um a, a lot of comments uh so that it's gonna be easy to um work with so unwrap the context from the generic context object to a cosmos sdk context and um, ctx dot ctx equal to sdk dot unwrap sdk context so we're gonna call it go ctx and then the next one is create a new post object with the details from the incoming message okay so we have var post equal to types dot post okay so we do creator types dot post we do a uh, creator msg dot creator so um, as an assignment i would like you to compare these two files which is uh, the update and the create so you can find the difference because they are very similar except for uh we updating with an, an id all right so i will duplicate this for instance if we come to the create we see that um this um uh, definition here has no id okay but here we already know the id so we're gonna specify it here id uh, message id and then we also have title message title that is the title coming in from the message and finally we have the body of the post message body and um so i think um we have to make sure that all these things are comma separated i want to confirm here that it's all comma separated here so i want to add a comment here that says address of the 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 creator of the post okay who initiated the post so you need to know that this is not a name it's more like um uh address okay and then finally title of the post to create so here i want to do the same thing just copy copy and paste so that when you're using it you will uh, know what it means of the post to update now you can uh, know the rest here i don't have to com comment every line so retrieve the current post by its id from the store and that says val found equal to k dot get post and guess what we're gonna have inside uh, context msg.id which is what we have here and if it is found so if it's not found what do we do if not if the post if the post is not found return an error saying the key does not exist okay how do we return it return nil error mode dot wrap okay sdk errors and, and you can find this on the cosmos uh, documentation on the errors error key air key not found 
fmt so this is what we're gonna print sprint f uh key percent d doesn't exist and we can down do msg.id oops id all right so i think we can do check if the creator of the incoming message is the same this is supposed to be message remember uh you can gift me crypto all right if you want to support me you can give me crypto i always want to create the very best tutorial on blockchains so we're checking if um, it's the same as the post creator so this is some kind of uh authentication so how do we do that we say if msg.creator is equal to val.creator if it's not equal then if it doesn't match what do we do we return an unauthorized error so to do that we return nil error mod errors mod now i think there is a typo here error errors mod dot wrap sdk errors dot air on or on or so rise you have to really pay attention to incorrect owner so this is some kind of um, authentication you have to pay attention to the casing okay so uh we have just um two more things to do here the first one is ev if everything is valid update the post in the store by calling the set post k dot set post um remember the set post function that we have here all right so this is k dot set post so set post is the member all right good so here we can then do the update so k dot set post ctx post and finally return a successful response in the k thing the post was created and return types dot msg we're looking for m msg update update post response this new okay so i think we're done with this function as usual you need to slowly scan through to be sure there are no bugs and in this case there are no bugs i think everything is fine okay um one of the reasons uh this file did not create automatically was because of um i did not finish the command it was asking me if i want to proceed so i want to just copy out this i'm going to copy out this and delete this uh, don't worry uh where is the delete button am i blind okay delete I want to create it from the command line then i'll paste the content yes so give it a few seconds it will create this deleted file for me and then i'll be back and paste the content back so you see it's been created now it has been created uh, it's still scaffolding but we now have the file we're looking for as you can see uh, the scaffolding created a whole number of files for us that um, we would have um, 
we would never have created manually and we would have had bugs okay so i'm glad that it created it but this is the file we're interested in i'm going to highlight delete everything here hit paste okay and um there we go so i'm gonna do all the other imports that are needed since they didn't uh automatically import so we're going to import errors mode remember that we used it and it's from cosmos sdk.io cosmos sdk.io slash errors and uh, actually if you copy this link to the uh to your browser you will be able to see that so we're going to import sdk which is github.com slash cosmos slash cosmos sdk types so we're also going to import errors again sdk errors from github.com github.com for slash cosmos for slash cosmos sdk types errors and finally uh, okay we already have it here i think um these are the things we need to import just save and you are good to go so um let's create a delete post feature by now you should already know the the process we just um run the ignite so i'm going to do clear ignite scaffold message and uh, the file we want to create is delete post and it's gonna have you int id so do you want yes i want it to scaffold and what happened do you want to proceed it said this message server update has online 12 online 12 here yes, tell, telling me that there's a bug online 12. ah so what could the bug be and this is the update post and the bug is um oh i see i see i see i see something was mixed so here we have um this types message update so this is supposed to be yeah star star types types dot m s g update post close all right then we open another bracket and now we have types message update response error save okay so i think um that should solve the problem msg update post response yes yeah the reason there's an underline is because this is supposed to be msg save okay cool now that that has been done um, I can come back and rerun my command. Meanwhile, it has already created this file for me. So I just want to rerun it. Up, up arrow on my keyboard and hit enter. Do I want? Yes. And error command application, whatever, proto. Was this an already defined my blog? And um, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This files have been created. Okay, good. So clear. Basically, these files have already been created and it's trying to recreate it. So that's just what it's saying. And um, we can just continue. Uh, we need to go and add a delete logic on our post. So if we come here, let me close this. If we come here on the post.go, now we can add it, a delete logic. So we can call it delete logic. And it's easy to add. We can say funk. Okay keeper remove post that's what we're gonna call it i would like to start with this a capital letter so remove post ctx sdk uh, dot context id uint 64 and uh, this solves the problem and uh, we can now write our i want to copy it especially these two 
I want to copy. So now I've, I'm done with the two. We can now uh, do store dot delete, which is the key thing we need to do in this function. Post ID bytes ID. All right. So now if we look here, uh, we can just be sure that our function is okay. And that's it. So this is the function to delete. Now we have to go to MSG delete server and write the function to do the delete. So it has already uh, scaffolded the function for us. There are a couple of things we need to imp import here, like errors, but um, everything here is already good. MSG delete post, MSG delete response error, and um, done automatically, uh, which is fine. Now we can focus on the code to delete. So let's declare, I'm removing this. So let's declare a variable we're gonna call val, found equal to k dot get post okay ctx msg dot id and if found return nil and remember errors errors mode dot wrap and sdk errors SDK errors. SDK errors. SDK errors dot error error key not found. And then FMT. That means we have to sprint if we have to import FMT key percent D doesn't exist and comma msg.id okay just to confirm that everything is fine sdk errors error not found and everything is fine instead of get pissed i uh, we have get post okay so um finally we'll do if msg.creator val dot creator so if the create if it's not the creator of the post if it's it's is not the creator of the post so this is like um authentication we're gonna return an error return so i'm gonna copy this errors dot mode and uh just to reproduce it here and then look for the difference so this is sdk errors error dot error on auto authorized yeah and then we're gonna just spit out a message on the screen instead of using fmt we're just gonna say incorrect owner and um finally we're going to do k dot remove post remember the remove post um that we have here we're gonna call it to actually delete the post so k dot remove post ctx msg dot id and that's it then we return types we return types msg delete so now um we can compare and see whether we imported everything we need we have types here good errors mode Cosmos SDK.io errors, SDK types, yes, SDK errors, yes, we have everything here. And that solves the problem for us. Okay, so um, we're gonna go ahead and scaffold messages. So here, uh, inside terminal, let's do some more scaffolding. Ignite scaffold query show post id uint response post post this way and yes after it has scaffolded 
why do I have this error already defined? Okay. Okay, good. So we're going to scaffold again. Post list. Uh, let me do clear. Okay, so we're going to scaffold query list post. So instead of just show post, we're going to scaffold list post list list post and it's going to give us some um, response dash dash response and uh, we're going to do post post then we we have to paginate paginated uh do you want to proceed with that committing yes enter so finally yeah, it has already created this file, so we'll keep saying the error. So finally, we're going to go to query show post. Query show post. Dot go. We update it, just a very little code. And then we also update query list post. And we are done. And then we test our application. And if we have extra time, we can then integrates Swagger so that people can consume our API and communicate with this application via API. But uh, query uh, show post is simple. Um, the function has already been scaffolded for us. So we just look for um, two or three lines to write. So here we're going to do post. Let me remove this first. So we're going to do post found equal to k dot get post ctx ctx rec dot id okay that's the request for the id so we do if it's not found i'll return nil sdk errors dot air key not found and um, that's it that is it response okay we're gonna have to add a response here where we have post that's it new um All right, uh, let's con let's go ahead um, in query show post go. Let's um, start writing some code. I'm going to drag this to the left. And uh, just to cross check that everything is fine. This code was auto uh, scaffolded for us. So check if the request is nil if it is return an error indicating invalid request and then on wrap the generic context to an sdk space specific context for accessing blockchain data so i think um we <clears throat> we are done now with this uh, we just need to add a few extra code so retrieve the post from the store using its id from the request okay so uh now the retrieval is happening so inside here let me add a few extra comments if the post doesn't exist return a not found error and uh, finally return is successful 
successful response with the post they found. So I think um, this pretty much sums up this. And of course, we should know that um, I can explain this a bit further. The variable rec. Okay. I think I will. Um, the incoming request containing uh, the ID of the post to be shown. And um, I think that's it. Now, this is what the page looks like now. So our last uh, implementation, uh, the last function we're going to implement is on query list posts. Okay, so that we can get list of posts. So um, it has been partly implemented for us and we're just going to cross check that um, the implementation is okay. As you can see, um, here, we're just going to say if request is nil return error and then here we're going to say open the key value store for this context using the store service and uh, let's now write the code store adapter equal to runtime dot kv store adapter and then k dot store service open kv store ctx and then store prefix let me add a comment the comment is create a new store with a prefix for posts ensuring all post data is uh, under under the same namespace okay I think um, that uh, largely solves the problem Okay, so and this is something we're used to new store, store adapter types dot key prefix. Types dot post key. So I think that solves most of the problem. This should be store. And then um, we're going to say initialize, initialize a slice to hold all posts that will be retrieved from this store okay and that's var posts types post and paginate through the store entries so um i know paginate will be pagination will be very important Calling the provider function for each entry. And um, let's create a variable for pagination. I'll call a, I'm going to call it something like page rest. So this page rest now. And then the error will be query dot paginate. 
star rec dot pagination funk key and that's um a byte array value bytes error not here um there is a mistake somewhere so i'm just gonna go through everything again first off let me open this no that's not a mistake so we have query.paginate store uh, rec.pagination function that has a closure and uh, yeah so that's perfect so var post types dot post and um on marshall the value into a post object if uh, k.ctc dot on marshall value and post there is not equal to null that's if there's a nil and then return the error um, marshalling fails okay and uh, we're gonna do one more thing append the post to the slice and then posts will be appended to post return nil and that settles it uh, for this function except that we have to check for error so I'm going to, I'm going to um, eliminate this and instead use the opportunity to check for error and that is if error occurred during pagination return an internal error so if error contains anything then return nil status dot error code dot internal error dot error and then finally we're gonna return I think we should extend this a little yeah that's the response we're returning but we can still extend it to contain uh, posts pagination and uh, that's pretty much it so that's it that's it for this function okay so this function is actually divided into four parts error handling uh, pagination data collection and then finally a return uh, it returns posts and pagination okay i think uh, to a large extent uh, we're actually done we just need to enter our keys like here and um, cross check that we do not have any uh, bugs now this this bug on the find ctx is coming from here we should call it ctx and the bug is gone now the one with our post key uh, once we add the keys uh, it will be gone too so which other bug error dot error now this bug um, is just about the importation here I uh, have not imported error um, this error dot error is supposed to be a function now the error is gone query list post response uh, we have to create it 
So I think um, generally everything here is done. Okay, so let's go here. So my blog. So here in Proto, my blog, and this is what we're looking for, query Proto. So here, um, we have to create the two functions. We, are, we want to create show post response. So we have show post request, show post response, show post response. It's not here. Actually, it's here, query show post response. So uh, what we're going to do is, um, instead of saying equal to one, we can extend it and say, uh, go, go proto, yeah? Dot nullable, yeah? Equal to false. And, um, I think that's what it the next one is query list post response query list post response so here we're going to do something interesting we're going to do repeated post post equal to one and then go go proto dot nullable equal to false then cosmos base dot query dot v1 beta1 dot page response pagination equal to two okay so i think um to a large extent this is the end of the posting uh we can now start um running some commands on our command prompt and uh, see whether our blockchain will respond before we conclude that i want to put this to uh and eliminate this uh delimit it with um semicolons so um come back to um keeper x my blog keeper now um if you look through the files you will see that there is a um, message server delete post so if you click on it uh let's quickly update what's inside most of the code has been uh written for us let's just confirm that everything is fine msg delete post everything is fine so we just need to add this all right uh there's a bug we have to fix and uh if you look at our file system uh you will immediately uh, realize that um we have some red files, which means there are some bugs inside some of these files. And the one I want to start with is the message. So it's looking like um, the, either the scaffolding was not done correctly, or um, let's just try and do a scaffolding for delete post and see whether it's going to override the ones we have. Then we can reinsert our code. Otherwise, um, we can just... Uh, find a way to go into the the files and uh, find what the problem is and fix it and before i even uh take the risk of running the scaffolding uh, again with ignite um you need to see what the problem is for instance in this file uh msg server delete the post if you go here inside keeper you will see it uh, first thing you notice is that it's complaining that this look at this saying undefined so this is not defined in types. Look at this is types.msg delete post. And if you come up here, you'll see that we imported types. All right. So if we go to the, those types that we imported, if we go to types, if we open here, types, if we go to types, you'll see that we're actually doing the import, but it looks like the file is incomplete. Okay. First of all, I just think that we should just go ahead and do the writing by ourselves. So uh, let's write um, message delete post. Okay, since it wasn't uh, scaffolded into the app, 
um, it's not even on the blog tutorial anywhere so we're just gonna use our knowledge and uh, create this so it's gonna be a struct so msg delete post and uh, struct and we're gonna have creator it's gonna be a string json otherwise we do it the way we did others for instance in the update delete post if you come here you can see um, the, uh, this is what I mean here um, let me remove this first and um, run this I just don't want to have to get into a place I have to write too much code because um, since we scaffolded the rest so uh, look at this on my um, command prompt you see ignite scaffold message delete posts u id u n so hit enter and let's see it's asking me if it should proceed without committing changes yes and let's see uh so i think it's best i show you i walk you through the debugging process so i run it and it came up with these errors and uh one of the errors is telling me that in this in this file tx my blog tx proto which is proto tx proto that um it has already defined uh delete okay already defined as you can see delete post already defined so um also on line 23 already defined so um instead of me doing the debugging in the background i want to make sure you see the debugging just in case you face the problem so if i do ctrl z you will see that it's saying uh that look at line 22 it has already defined delete so basically what i'm trying to do is to rerun the the uh what do you call it auto uh, uh creation uh command all right but i have to delete the ones it did before because i feel that it did not do it well for delete post so i'll delete it check it again line 23 okay deleted line 24 okay deleted also if you go to the bottom you will see uh you may you may see uh the uh variables where it was de de defined for delete post like this one is update post so you can delete it too and um not, that's not just that i think um we'll run it one more time if it complains about the files you know we already have delete post files you see if it complains about these two we delete them too all right and uh the one in keeper too this so but let's let's run it so i'm gonna run clear um, most of my videos I like to um, leave the debugging session on too. so uh, ignite scaffold message delete post and let's see okay so that, that worked well uh, this time around after I cleared the TX proto uh, file of all mentions of delete and all of a sudden all the files are green okay all the files are green now let's see all the files are green Ah, oh, interesting everything is green so uh, there was a bug that was why it's all red every place but we still have this guy and uh, let's find um, why it's having this issue okay so this guy here uh, query list post there's a misspelling the key here is supposed to be capitals so now the bug is gone and um, there is one here pagination rec dot pagination undefined pagination okay so we're gonna try and solve that all right while we're trying to solve that i want to show you something in the module there's a red file in the module and the module folder and uh let's just get to the module folder again so you see where it is remember we're just trying to do the final debugging with before we launch our blockchain so on the x my blog keeper on the module you'll see simulation.go when you come to the simulation.go, what you see is that um, it said it's redeclared. This particular OP weight delete, it's redeclared because we tried to run the ignite command many times to scaffold the delete. So I'm going to just um, delete all the reoccurrences. Okay. All the reoccurrences will be deleted. So I think, um, so we just need to 
create create post update of the post delete um sorry message delete post okay all right so we just have it for all and this solves the the problem um there is also if you go down the file you will also see that um, the delete function is uh, repeated multiple times because we run the command multiple times. So we are going to delete all the recurrences. Operations append and it's the same thing for delete. New weighted operation. I'm going to delete this. Uh, you just have to be careful not to delete on uh, code you want not to delete. And uh, operations message. And uh, this one is update. Okay, so everything is cool now. The file is free of bugs. So if I save and uh, check, the file is free of bugs. So um, it's just remaining one that um we're taking time to uh, debug see this rec dot pagination if you come to query proto because this is query list so the query proto file you will see that we declared pagination in the query list post response what of the list post request query list post request so you need to declare pagination here too i added this line let me remove it so you see what it looked like before. Oops. Um, this is what it looked like before. Uh, like this. This is what yours should look like. So I would like to add pagination to this. But then instead of page request, uh, look at here, you see, fail to execute both. Is it installed? So my buff in my own installation has failed. So I'm gonna have to like restart my VS code and see whether it solves the problem. Otherwise I'll run some commands to recreate buff. So here it's gonna be page request. Request. Like this. Then we we'll, we we'll remove this. So I think this is fair like that. right now that we've done pagination just notice the difference this one is page response page request and that's the only difference let's come up and uh, clear uh, let's try and um, restart our proto so make proto gen and hit enter uh, let's see what it does uh, well that didn't work so let's um, try to do it manually so both generate uh, command both okay so we're going to have to set up both Okay, um, I've done a couple of things. Uh, number one is that uh, I installed both. As you can see, it has colored my uh, files that are dot proto differently. So the dot proto files are now colored differently. And um, how did I install it? First of all, I checked if both was installed. So you do buf dash dash version. If it shows you an error like this, that means buff is not installed. But if buff installed, it's not going to show you an error, okay? So if buff is not installed, you need to run this. Um, I don't know how to run it in Windows, so you can probably uh, Google how to install buff in Windows. That is BUF. Okay? So once it's uh, installed, I restarted my uh, Visual Studio code. And as you can see, all the errors are gone. So now we can actually try and run a uh, 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 blockchain using Ignite uh, just to test out uh, some of these things. So the first thing we actually want to do is maybe we can uh, create a post, save a post and all those things. And then we can move to the next part of the tutorial where we have to like uh, install Swagger. All right, um, let's um, clear. Okay, let's try and uh, run our blockchain. So ignite chain build. Okay, so uh, this is going to take some time and I'm going to pause this video. I'll come back when it's done. I remember I'm using Cosmos uh, 0.50 version.
your version uh, should be higher. But while it's happening, I want you to pay attention to this. Inside my uh, project folder, there's a CMD a folder. And this CMD folder has this command, my blog D. Because the name of the project is my blog, so it created this command. So this is the command we can use to interact with the blockchain once it's running. So let's just allow it to finish building and then it will run. I think there's a bug. Uh, we can investigate the bug. And it has to do with this paginated. So this is Ignite Chain Build. As you can see, it ran well. But before you run yours, I want you to go to Proto Folder, my blog. On uh, Then you click on Query.Proto. You scroll down to Query List, uh, Query List Post Request and add paginated there. Bool paginated equal to one. Add it. All right. Let me just pull this down so you know where I'm talking about. So it's it's towards the ending of the file. All right. So um, then you can run ignite chain build. After a few seconds, it would have built, and then uh, it will tell you the command to use, which is my block D. Okay. Now we can use the command. So let me clear this. So first of all, you want to type my blog D to be sure that it's it runs. And um, if you encounter an error, uh, I'll show you how to fix it. So my blog D. If you en encounter an error like this, where it says command not found, of course, that's because the command is not found. So you need to find where my blog D was installed in your system. Okay. So I'll paste this. So type this. And then hit enter. So it's going to tell you where my blog D is found. Now note that in some systems, it will be inside this uh, folder. But in some systems like my MacBook, it saved it somewhere else in my in my uh, system that is called um, user, Mac, Go, Bin, whatever. So now I need to add this to my uh, file. And that is my environment path. In Windows, just Google how to add um, a path to your environment path. So we need to add this. So um, in Mac, we use nano. If nano does not work for you in Mac, you go how to add nano. So hit enter. It has opened my environment path file. And then I will paste this. Not this line, but this one. This is the path where it is located. So you paste this whole line. So export path dollar sign path uh, colon users. Um, make sure that um, it is like this or uh, whatever yours is. Yours may not be exactly may not be called Mac, you know. So once you paste it, that is Control V or Command V to paste it. You press Control X, X as in xylophone. So Control X, not Command X on Mac. It's Control X. Ah, what happened? Let's do that again. Uh, it's not behaving exactly the way I want, so I'm just going to use another. Let me use this terminal. Okay, so I open my Mac terminal and paste. Hit enter. Okay, so you copy the path and paste this um, or whatever yours is. You know, um, mine showed this. Okay, so this is what you copy and paste, then Control X. Am I pressing the wrong? I think my brain is a bit confused. Okay, yeah, that's because I didn't make any change. Oh, I did not make any change. So you press uh, Control X. It will ask you if it wants to write, uh, if you want it to write the file, you press Y and then you hit enter. So Control X, Y and enter. And then that's how you end up here. So now you end up here, you have to source the file. So you have to basically type this. So initially you type nano to open it. Now you type source and then hit enter and it sources the file. So once the file is sourced, my block D, my blog D can now work. If I now hit it, it now works. 
So, but for it to work in this other command prompt, I have to restart it. I have to restart the command prompt. So, is that I restart my Visual Studio code completely? Or I try a new command prompt? So, for now, let me try a new one. There's a new one. And let's see if it will. Oh, it works now. So, any changes you make to your CMD, it will work. So, now, um, now we can write a code to try and create a new post from the command prompt. After that, we can gradually move over to where we can try and um, use um, an API or something to make the same posts. So um, let's try and fetch all posts first. We know we don't have any posts in there, but we can try and block the queue, blog show dash post. And of course, um, yeah, I made a mistake. This is what we're supposed to write, blog the, my blog. So it says accept one argument, receive zero. Yes, you need to give it the post ID. So like this, and then we'll say the post ID is the first one, zero, and there is no post, okay, you see? Uh, there's no post so now let's try and create a new post okay so we're going to first of all add um blockchain uh, address or key so my blog d key add or let's say key list uh it should be plural keys list so this keys list shows that there are no keys, okay? No addresses in the blockchain. It's a brand new blockchain. So let's add a key. So um, my blog D key add, let's call the key Alice. Why do I keep making the mistake? It should be plural, keys add Alice. So it has added address, you see? This is the address and the name the pseudonym for the address is Alice. And here's the public key. And um, the mnemonic phrase is here too. It's saying we should write it and stuff. So now we've added at least one address. We can remove it um, by saying my block key is remove or delete Alice. And it's asking me if we should delete. Yes, it has deleted. So if we now do my block keys list, it's going to show me there are no records. Okay, so we just added and removed the record. All right, cool. So now let's add another one. Let's re add the Alice. My block keys add Alice. Good, Alice is added. All right, we want to, we will want to create a post from the command prompt. And the uh, first thing we need to do is to actually start our block chain okay so i'm going to say uh ignite um chain serve so this starts the blockchain and once the blockchain is started you see everything went well okay you see i added a list the blockchain is running there's bob's account and these are accounts that are in the blockchain just in case we want to do anything i want you to pay attention to the the casing you know, um, a few minutes ago, I added a list with a capital A, uh, but also the blockchain comes with a list with small letter, uh, which um, you can add to uh, using the add method. You can add any number of addresses. So now it's running. I'll go to another command prompt and um, try. And um, this is my command prompt, right? I'll try there and uh, create a blog post. Now, before I do that, I want to let you know that um, my VS code is not restarted. So even though I've uh, synced, I've made, um, I've set up my my blog D in my environment path. Um, I still need to restart my VS code for this particular command prompt to to pick it. So, but this one already picks uh, picked it and it's working. So let me write the code. My blog D, TX. My blog. Okay, why is it my blog? Because here, if you come to the folder, you will see that um, what's written here is, uh, where is it? 
inside X you have my blog you see the spellings are very very important okay so my blog so we now give it the instruction which is create blog and um, why because um, we have create blogs in the keeper you see create post we have it see create post so we are calling on that and that says create post uh, the title of the post is what we'll say we'll call it hello world that's the title and then dash dash from Alice okay that's the address it will pick Alice address okay dash dash chain dash ID dash my blog space my blog hit enter if you did everything well, you're going to see exactly something like this on the blockchain and it's saying confirm transaction before signing and broadcasting. So we'll try and confirm first and it says uh, unauthorized stamp. Okay, let's even start from here. So everything here says signature verification field. Please verify account number zero and chain ID in my blog unable to verify TX so um actually the chain id uh the problem is that the the we didn't get the chain id correctly so to verify your chain id you run this okay especially on a mac system if i hit enter it's gonna tell me that my chain id is my blog so if you look at the command i ran before which is this to create the post you see that at the end when i said chain id i misspelled it so if i put the capital b here hit enter it's gonna ask me the same thing at the bottom here I hit a y and everything went well we even have the transaction hash we have everything so we created a blog with uh, this is the the creator and the title is hello and the body is word and what else the time signature and everything see it makes sense all right so let's view the blog post my uh, let me clear this so let's view the blog post my blog d q my blog show post zero you see this is the, the post zero is the very first post and you can see it has a word and the title is hello so um that's relatively it so we can actually update this post just from command align we can say blog let me clear this my blog d tx my blog um, update post we can say hello cosmos that is post zero from alice and chain id dash dash chain dash id dash my blog hit enter and it updates the post all right so it's asking me uh should it confirm transaction yes and it is updated now okay so if we do clear and try to view the post now it changes hello is the title and cosmos is the um the subtitle so if we do this um here i just want you to understand that you can add more information this is the title cosmos says dave partner is the greatest greatest or whatever the spelling is hit enter you see say yes and we have it so if we now let me clear so i updated that post if we now do this show post zero you see the title is now long and the body is now really long okay i hope you know you can reach out to me on this email
Okay. Um, especially as a, a CTO or manager of your your blockchain team. So we can also do the delete. Uh, we can delete the post. We can add more posts. I just want to run the last command, which is for delete. So you can just get an get an idea. My blog dtx blog delete post zero from Alice, where the chain ID is my blog. Enter. Oh, I made a mistake. And I know you saw it before me. My blog D. And um, did we have a bug? Oh, here. So. And there you go. So uh, it's asking me to confirm. I say yes and confirm. It's gone. It is gone. So this uh, concludes this section of the tutorial. And I'm thinking maybe I should uh, go into a next video to add uh, an interface, API interface to this. Or should I do it in this video? It's hard to tell if uh, what people will really like one video that contains everything or uh, a, multiple videos. Okay, so here's the thing, right? Um, this video has become too long. I'm going to stop it here. And if you watched till this point, uh, just watch the very next video. I'll put this on a playlist, my blockchain playlist. So watch the, the, watch the next video. You'll see where I added... Um, swagger i added api endpoint so that this can be a website all right you host this as a website and then you can access it via a url and then you can call the endpoints if you want okay and then the endpoints to do all these things we did here create post edit delete post and so on we can do it on on the website okay a get request post requests we can also have a swagger that will do the documentation, API documentation, so that the people that want to build applications that will interact with our blockchain can easily do that. And in that case, we're going to be using Echo Framework. And of course, don't worry if you've never heard of Echo Framework or, and uh, Go programming language. It doesn't matter. Okay, Go Lang. Doesn't matter. Uh, as long as you can code something like JavaScript, PHP, Python, any of them, you should be able to go uh, learn uh, the course pretty quickly. And that video is going to be short because it's not a lot of work. Okay. So remember to email me if um, you have any concerns. And um, below this video, there's a, um, a link to join my blockchain group. Okay. On Telegram. Just follow it so that once I release a new video, you will always be the first to get it. Alright, so uh, see you in the next video.